All right, we're going to our Bibles to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. If you don't have a Bible, raise your hand. We'll get you a Bible. Get you a King James Bible. Got to call one of our members. He's out in Texas. Or actually Colorado. All right, Acts chapter 9, and I guess we can start in verse 1. Acts chapter 9, verse 1, the Bible says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, those Christians, whether they were men or women, didn't care, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And he was journeyed, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Is it, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can be gathered here this morning in a free country, uh, speaking and preaching and teaching from your word. Help us to continue in that in our worship for you. Help us to be attentive to the word spoken today. Lord, I pray that you empty me of myself, fill me with thy spirit. Help me to say everything that you want me to say. And withhold from my mind and my uh, lips uh, anything that you would not have me to say. I pray that your spirit would move upon each and every heart this morning. And I pray if there's a lost soul out here in a crowd like this, there has to be one. Father, I do pray that your touch would be upon him or her this morning and that they would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and have their eternal security secured in Jesus Christ. And in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. So... Uh, I wasn't going to focus too much morning on Saul, but the text just has has it sticking out there. We find Saul in, in verse 1, he's breathing out threatenings and slaughter and murdering Christians, doing this in the name of the Lord because he was blinded. He didn't know the Lord. Uh, and he desired of him letters to Damascus to go to these synagogues because at this time the church was still uh, fairly a baby. And uh, they were still meeting and were closely associated with the Jewish um, sect and the faith that they would meet there. So he was going to the synagogues to bind and uh, to arrest, to bring men and women, boy and girl, back to Jerusalem to be killed uh, in the name of God. That's what he was yeah. doing it for. Uh, little did he know that wasn't what God actually wanted. So he came near Damascus and suddenly there was a light shone round about him from heaven. Uh, I know there's pictures, we see pictures, uh, you can Google it probably later after you leave, of Saul on a horse falling from the light. There's no such thing in scripture. We just know he probably could have been a house, he could have been in a wheelbarrow, I don't know what he was in, but I know that he was on his way to Damascus. And this bright light, the, the glorious light of God, shone round about him so bright that he would lose his sight. And a voice comes out and he says, Saul, Saul, we know if you have the red letter edition of your Bible, that's Jesus speaking. He says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Uh, and why, what do you mean? I'm not killing you, Lord. Well, you're killing my people. Uh, Jesus associates himself with us and we with him. I went. We always say, he is mine and I am his, right? Uh, and he said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, and the Lord said, I am Jesus. He identifies himself there whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. So don't you think at this moment in time that Saul on his way to do something for God that he thought in his mind, uh, was frightened and terrified at this time. Absolutely. A bright light shines and a voice comes out of heaven, and the people around him don't hear, they just see, they just hear a voice, but they're like, they don't see anything, what's going on here? But one man knows what is going on. Yeah. And, and I would be terrified. Just imagine yourself, you're just walking to, uh, let's say, Glendale over here, or driving to Glendale, and a light just shines around about your car. I feel like it right here. <laughs> You're just like, oh my goodness, what's going on? And why are you persecuting me or whatever, you know? And I would be terrified in that position, absolutely frightened, shaken to the core of hearing the voice of God asking me why, why I am persecuting him. 
Mm. That would be terrifying. I just mm. want that to get that sink down in your head. Mm -hmm. And verse 6 tells us that. He and he trembling and astonished. Like, not like, yeah, what's up? No, he's like, Lord, trembling and astonished. I, 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 he's on the road. He's blinded by this glorious light. And he asks, Lord, uh, 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 um, what wilt thou have me to do? Uh, and Jesus tells him, he says, arise, get off of your face. And you know what's interesting? It, it, it says on verse 4, it says, and he fell to the earth and he heard a voice. How many times do you fall to your knees when you hear the voice of God? Just a side note, that was free. <laughs> Jesus says, arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Uh, so he's told to go into the city. He says, wait, and you'll be told what you must do. Uh, by only obeying, by, ha by him having to obey and obeying those commands, uh, he would learn what he was to do next. Amen. Uh, many of us want to be used to the Lord. We want to be told what to do. Uh, we, but we're hesitant on some basic commands. Basic commands. Uh, the principle is that God will not reveal his will on his way unless we are willing to submit to what he has already told us to do. God's not going to say, here's some more steps if you're not doing what he's already told you. Like what? Like praying without ceasing. Like being thankful. Like reading and studying my Bible. Just basic things that God wants us to do. Satan doesn't want you to do. But God wants you to do it. Satan will bring hindrances into your life. Uh, but we need to overcome those through spiritual warfare. So Paul says, what do you want me to do? And he has to obey the Lord. And then he'll get further instruction on what he is to do. But for now, I'm telling you, just get up. And go into the city. Yeah. Get up and go into the city. That's all you have to do, uh, Saul. That's the principle. Saul would only learn what to do when he got up and went into the city. That's key. Uh, and, and, and he says, you got to notice here, when Jesus says in verse 6 in the, in the last half of that verse, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou might do. What thou could do. No, he says what thou must do. What thou must do. What do you mean? Jesus is not giving him a suggestion. He's giving him a command. Amen. You must go into the city, and then it will be told what thou must do. You must do these things. Amen. It was an obligation. Paul got saved, I believe, right here when he called him Lord, because no man could call him Lord unless the Son of God's in him. Amen. Paul discovered Christ not only wanted to save him uh, from something, but he wanted to save him for something. Amen. And he noticed that later. And likewise, we need to realize as Christians... Uh, that there are gifts that God's given to us, amen? When you get saved, the Holy Spirit imparts to you at least one gift, maybe a few, but at least one, and He expects us to use those in and through and performing a ministry, and that ministry is to be performed in and through the church. Not on your own, not a, not a uh, 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 some other type of organization that's not associated with the church. It's, it's through the ministry of a church, amen? I have a gift. I want to use it to profit the body with all. Amen. I'm not going to have a gift and then uh, not saying you can't use your gift out in, in the workplace or anything like that, but God saved you to use your gift, specifically you and placed you in this church to use that gift for His honor, His glory, and to edify the body. Amen. We're not saved to sit. We're not saved to sour. We're not saved to soak, but we're saved to serve. Amen. Yes. Uh, Ephesians 2.10 would tell us we are created, uh, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Amen. That God hath before ordained them that we should walk in them. What? Amen. In good works. We're his workmanship. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Right? We know that song? Yeah. God's still working on us. He's not through with us. You're right. still here alive and breathing. God wants to use you. Amen. God wants to use you. Not to just sit around and be like, oh, I'm the only well, I'm living the Christian life. Go to church on Sunday. That's about it. Throw my Bible in the whatever. No, no, God wants to use you. We're to live for him Amen. because he died for us. Amen. That's the least we can do. Uh, Romans would tell us, uh, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, Amen. holy and acceptable Amen. to God, which is your just reasonable service. Amen. Your reasonable service. So, verse 8 there, it says, Saul arose, so he did obey from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him, those folks that were with him, by the hand, and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. I would say he was absolutely astonished. He was shocked. He was terrified. 
Uh, if, if you're so terrified, you are so distraught. A lot of people that get distraught, they stop eating. They have hardships going on in their life, they stop eating and they get skinny. You're like, oh, you must be losing weight. Yeah, I'm doing fine. And inside you're like, no, I'm doing very bad. I'm doing very bad right now. Uh, Saul, no doubt God calling him to do something, him getting saved and say, you must do this. He is so scary, so terrified. He doesn't know what to do. He says, I need to go and fast and pray. Because Amen. prayer is always associated with fasting. Amen, yeah. And for three, but notice he didn't he didn't eat or drink. They were trying to fast with no water. Mm. That's tough. Man. That's very tough. Uh, so while Saul <laughs> is dealing with that, he's three days without cider drink. While he's dealing with that, the main part of my text and what I want to preach on is a man that we kind of pass by. Uh, and it, the, the Bible says here in verse 10. There was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Ananias. There's another man that God points out and or introduced him. God calls him by name. And he says, the, uh, uh, and, and, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, behold, I am here. Well, why is that, why is that significant? When God speaks to you, there is always a response. There's always a response. Well, what if I just don't? What if I don't answer the phone? It doesn't matter. You can respond in two ways. Same thing with the gospel message. You, uh, to someone who is lost, you can preach the gospel. You can share with them the good news of Jesus Christ. But they always have two options. They can either receive Jesus Christ or reject Jesus Christ. There's always two options. Likewise, the Christian can respond to God's call in one of two ways. Obedience or disobedience. You can receive that call or you can reject that call. Right. Uh, and, and I want to—I just want to point out uh, that the father desires a proper response from his children. Do you agree with that? Yeah. He, uh, obviously, I'm a father. I wouldn't like the response of a child when I tell him to do something, and he says no. Oh, oh! But God's long suffering, hey, and as a father in the home, you have to show your because they view you as God the Father. You're, the, you're, you're God's deputy in the home. You represent Him in the home. And I know that's a huge responsibility on a man. Yeah. And a lot of men would say, I just don't want to handle that. And they leave off their their, their uh, priorities. They leave off their responsibilities. And they're worse than an infidel, the Bible says. Now, I'm, not the, I'm not knocking the fact that women don't have a hard job. I think they got the short end of the stick if you they shouldn't eat the fruit, man, you know. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm just saying that the man, and, and if you look at it in our country today, how many of, uh, um, I shared with you the uh, on Father's Day, the statistics, I can't remember them all off the top of my head anymore, uh, but the majority of homes in America today are without a father. Why? Because that's how you ruin a nation. You break up the home, God's first Amen. institution. If the home goes, the church goes, so goes the nation. That's right. Amen. God needs fathers in the home. God needs mothers in the homes too. But God definitely needs fathers in the home. And so God desires a proper response from his children. Amen. So I want to address just and share with you three responses that we see from Ananias in our text. Number one, his initial response is readiness. He says, Behold, I am here. Kind of reminds me of Samuel when he says, Speak, Lord, for thy... Hey, Harlan, what is it? Harlan, what is it? 1 Samuel uh, 3.9? Is that what it is? What's 1 Samuel 3.9? Speak. Thy servant here. He's, he's getting too many verses now. He gets like 17 verses throughout the week. <laughs> Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. He was ready. Ananias was ready. He, had not, he acknowledged the Lord... How? Because it says, Behold, I am here, Lord. He was a man that was already following the Lord. He was already a Christian. Uh, and Jesus was already the Lord of his life. He was ready. And whatsoever the Lord hath said to us, are we prepared to do it? Are we prepared to do it? What drawbacks and excuses there are. Uh, there's, there's so many abundant uh, that, that we can give. And, and, and these excuses are nothing to God, but we tend, we tend to give them anyway because it's our human nature. Amen. Amen. But blessed is the man or the woman who says, "Ready, sir." Amen. Aye, aye, sir. Whatever, it, whatever it needs to be. Amen. God saw Ananias not because of his ability, but because his because of his availability. Amen. He was available. Which word describes you best? Uh, not because of my ability, or yes, because of my ability. Paul. But, but, 
Saul, who would turn into the great apostle Paul later on, would say, I don't preach Christ with the big puffy words and man's wisdom. I just preach Christ and him crucified. Amen. Preach the cross. I just give it basic. Why they put candy on the lower shelf down here? Because kids can get it. And that's exactly who I want to enter into in the kingdom of God. Childlike faith. Amen. Just, okay, Jesus died for me. I'm a sinner. I know I'm going to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I want to receive Christ. All right. That easy. That's all you got to do. There's nothing else you got to do. Amen. Baptism doesn't save you. We know the thief on the cross. When he said, Lord, remember remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom, he says, today you'll be with me in paradise. Amen. All right, now hop down off the cross. Uh, do some work over here. Go be a missionary here. Get baptized over here. Uh, pray some rosary beads over here. And get back up on the cross and die so that you come with me. No. He says, you believe on me? That's it. Amen. 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 The gospel is so simple, people. Yes. The gospel is so simple. Satan wants to put in all these other things yes. that make you go... So God saw Ananias not because of his ability, but because of his availability. Amen. We should all be so attentive attentive to the voice of our master when he's speaking to us through his word, illuminated by his spirit. Why? So we can do the will of God. Amen. Are you in his word daily so you can hear from him? That's the thing. If I'm not in his word daily, how am I going to hear from him? Amen. He's written me a book. He's written me a love letter that I need to read, and he wants me to grow. And Peter would admonish us and say, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Grow in grace. Grow in His grace. Look at verse 11. So Ananias' initial response was that of readiness. Behold, I am here, Lord. He was ready to go. All right, Lord, I'm here, Lord. I'm listening, Lord. I'm, 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 I'm trying to walk with you, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight. And inquire of the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. And I seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him and that he might receive his sight. God told him the when, God told him the where, God told him the who, God told him the why. Yes. Yeah. Wow. I'm not saying God's going to tell you that all in one shot. That's, that's pretty lucky. That's pretty blessed of him to get that. But we, we can know through God's providence and different things coming into our lives what God's will is. Obviously Amen. through His Word. It always stems from His Word. And never go against His Word. Amen. Amen. There, I, I, I heard of a story years ago. There was a, a lady who said she had a, she had a vision on her, on, her, on, her, uh, on her bed. And she woke up in the middle of the night and she told this pastor. She says, God gave me a vision. And he said, what was the vision? She's like, he said that I should divorce my husband, so I did. No, 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 that's against God's uh, uh, will. That's not God's will that we do that. So be careful because many people say, I'm like, I have a vision from God. But if it's more revelation than what's already been given as revelation, let him be accursed. We don't, there is no new revelation of God. Everything that God wants us to know, uh, life and godliness is given to us right here. Amen. You want to know what the purpose of your life is? Look right here. You want to know what you need to do with your life? Look right here. You want to know uh, why the world is what it is? Look right here. Amen. Amen. You want to know who God is? Look right here. Amen. Uh, so the Lord gives them very specific commands. Go to the street called Straight. It was, a, it was one of the only straight streets. It would go all the way across the city. And it's still there today. Uh, he would say, inquire in the house of Judas, one named Saul. So now he hears this word Saul of Tarsus. Then God says, oh, you know, this is, this is why that you need to go and go get this man from the Holy Praying. And he's already seen the vision of a man named Ananias coming in anyway. Well, maybe I'm not that Ananias. There's got to be another Ananias. I'm a John. There's got to be a thousand Johns. Right? What's, what's the new baby name that everybody picks? Uh, Brayden, Caden, Jaden. There's, there's a million Jadens now. I, you don't got to call me, Lord. <laughs> but notice Ananias didn't ask why. He didn't ask why. Look at verse uh, um, 13. It says, Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done against thy saints at Jerusalem. Well, how does he know that? Well, we know from verse 1, Saul's yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter. He's murdering and killing Christians in the name of the Lord. And now he's got letters and authority to go from Jerusalem up to Damascus to go bind people and kill them and bring them back and judge them and kill them. So now Ananias, yes, his initial response was readiness, but his second response is reservation. Reservation or hesitation. That's a natural response. Very natural response. Why? 
He's deathly afraid of Saul. Who isn't? If you're a Christian, and uh, let's just say the governor of Arizona, or there's some man, let's just say his name is John, and John is out to kill every Christian he sees. He's shooting up churches. He's going to state by state, church by church, city by city, and he's just gunning down people. You think, man, y'all need some better security teams. But, uh, but he's coming out, and, and then this man gets saved unbeknownst to you, and God tells you, I want you to go witness to him. Would there not be some hesitation? Amen. Would there not be some reservations? I got a family, a job, a wife. Don't kill me. Go, 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 that guy. Yeah, that's very Christian like. <laughs> but Saul, Saul had a vision of you already coming in. So he can get his sight. Why why do I have to go? So he can get his sight. Amen. So he can see. And then I was like, look, Lord, I've heard by many of this man. His, 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 so his reservations, he's saying, Lord, I, I've heard. I, I don't know if you know this, but what you're asking me to do, I don't know if you've heard what he's done. And he even tells the Lord. And this is why I love Ananias, because he can just talk to God. And that's what we can do, Amen. is talk to God. If you're his child, he hears you. If you don't have the Holy Spirit of God, you're none of his. So get saved. Amen. But he says, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. Look, I've heard the rumors. Or not even rumors. I just heard all these things uh, from what they say by many, not just a few, not just a couple, by many, Amen. he says. It, it, it was many who warned about Saul of Tarsus and how he's a head-hunting Christian. Oh, I'm sorry, he's head-hunting Christians. Mm. Uh, you know, so I, I, I think in, in this hesitation or this reservation... Our response as Christians to God when He calls us to do something is, well, people have told me, fill in the blank. Mm. Well, my pastor advised me, fill in the blank. Well, my friend said I should. Well, my college professor said, what did God say? Amen. Amen. What did God say? Amen. Reservation, hesitation, resistance, or all these things. You know, when you want your dog to go somewhere, who has a dog, by the way? Forget cats. Uh, oh, yeah, big cats. Just hide them when I come to your house. You're walking your dog. Come on, come on. I like them when they're kitties. If I had a farm, I wouldn't have a cat. So there you go. So you kill all the mice. So you're walking your dog, or you're walking your cat. You walk the cat? I don't know. Uh, you're walking your dog, and your dog stops at a bush. You're like, come on. You just want them to go, right? You're like, you're like I don't want to sit here at this bush. There's nothing cool about this bush. I'm wanting to go this way. But, he, but he's so intent, he's really intrigued by that bush. He wants to know everything about that bush. But you pull on the leash. What's on the leash? Resistance. Hesitation. Reservation. We're the dog. God's the leash holder. I'm not a dog. That's illustration. Come on. Stop being a millennial hit hurt. God wants us to go somewhere. God wants us to do something. Amen. God wants us to speak to someone. Amen. He wants us to yield to His will and His way, not our Amen. own way. But we see this bush, and whatever that bush is for you, you can fill in the blank. Well, God's telling me to do something, but I, I need this. Whatever that bush is. And we find pleasure and comfort in that thing for a time. And it might even be something that's not even bad. It might even be an okay thing. It might even be a good thing, but it could be a bad thing. But we're so caught up of what's going on in this bush and forget that we're on a mission to walk with the Lord. Amen. Hmm. Walking with the Lord. Uh, is this bush more important than your master? Is this whatever is concerning you, whatever that you're wrapped up in right now, does that matter more than what matters to him? And if you're struggling with that, then you're probably wrong because he's always right. Amen. Does that bush give you blessings? Does that bush give you comfort? Does it satisfy your soul? Let me answer for you. No, it doesn't. But God's will and God does satisfy your soul. If, if we're the dog, then why don't we listen to our master? It, 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 so I ask you, is he, is he Lord of your life? Is he Lord of your life? Well, yeah, I received him as my Lord and Savior. Okay, well, if he's your Lord of your life, why are you not listening to him? Amen. Yes. Why are you not obeying him? Amen. Well, 
So I ask, like, why, why then, if, he's, if he is Lord, say, yeah, he is Lord of my life, then why do we resist? Why do we hesitate? Why do we have reservations? Why don't we do what he wants us to do? Why do we get frustrated? Why do we get scared? Why do we keep tension on the, leaf, the leash when he's saying, let's go? Let's go. But he's long-suffering and leaves us at the bush for some time. Mm. There might be consequences in staying at the bush. Good or bad. In this case, probably bad. But God is long-suffering. He's so long-suffering. But his long-suffering leads to judgment always. Always. We get dissatisfied. You know, what is it? What is it that keeps us from doing the will of God? Ananias, I, I appreciate him, as I said earlier, because he's just talking to God. He says, look, I, I heard all this evil. I heard of from many people that he's done all these bad things. I don't know if you know this or not, God, but I, I, he's done a lot of evil here. He, Ananias expresses his concern for security and safety, or safety and security, which is natural. It's a real issue, no doubt about that. Not discrediting his need for safety. I'm not discrediting anybody's need for safety. God ever call you to a Muslim nation that wants to behead Christians? Are you going to listen to God or are you going to let the fear hold you back? Maybe Ananias was concerned for a time, but it grew less and less because from Damascus to Jerusalem was roughly 170 miles. Six or seven day journey, somewhere around there if you're walking. So why should I be so... I'm not too concerned... Because I'm 170 miles away. Like, that's a long way away, you know. But in a car, it'd only be a few hours. But, you know, I got a few days. You know, I can prepare. I can mentally prepare. I can do whatever I need to do. But, Lord, look at verse 14. Then Ananias answered and said, oh, I'm sorry, verse 14. And here, not, not H-E-A-R, H-E-R-E, here, here he hath authority from the chief priests. Not back in Jerusalem. He's here now. Lord, I don't know if you know this. I was okay with him being five days away. But he's here now. Amen. He's here now. Obviously, he's terrified. He has authority from the chief peace to bind all that call upon their name. Tell me that Ananias is not scared out of his words. He didn't know that God already dealt with Saul and Saul got saved. Amen. God doesn't let you in on the full picture all the time because he desires us to walk by faith. Look, God has already given Paul a vision of one named Ananias coming in and laying his hands on him. It has to be you. It has to be you. Well, why me? It has to be Ananias. Look at verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way. Jesus re is reassuring him. Uh, he says, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Who is? Saul is. He's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. God acknowledges his concerns. God acknowledges his hesitation and his reservations. It's like as if God almost cut him off mid-sentence. Just going back through verse 13. Lord, I've heard all how much he's done, how much evil he's done, and, and here he has authority, and God says, go that way. Cuts him off mid-sentence. Go thy way. You know what I told you to do. Just go thy way. Amen. I love that about God. Mm -hmm. Although he's long-suffering, but he's, unre he's relentless. He says, you need to do what I told you to do. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm, glad it, I'm, glad, I'm glad that when all other men fail and women have failed in your life and said, you know, I'm done with her. God says, I'm not through with you yet. Amen. I want to use you still. Praise Amen. Lord. Praise the Lord for his long suffering, his faithfulness, his goodness, his gentleness, his mercy, and above all, his Praise grace and his love. The father loves his children. He says, Look, I'm not I'm not just gonna lay off off here to the side. I want to use you. I want to <laughs> use you still. I have a plan. Uh, God cut him off mid-sentence. Don't obviously the Lord already knew who Saul of Tarsus was. God already knew. Obviously, he's the sovereign. He knows everything that's going on. Amen. But he, it's interesting to me, he wanted to use another certain disciple. Be, even though he had a plan for Saul and a purpose for Saul, he wanted to use another disciple to get to Saul because he had a plan and a purpose for him too. What was that? 
Well, God has a plan and a purpose for each of us. It's not just for one giant Christian. It's for all Christians. Amen. For all Christians. So well, who else could God have used, I asked the question. Who else could God have used? The answer is anyone. God can use whomever he wills to use. So why Ananias? Why not someone else? Because that's who God chose. So I ask you this morning, what about you? What about you? Oh, not me, Pastor. Well, why not you? Did Jesus Christ die for you? Amen. Mm. What can you do for him that loved you so much that he gave himself for you? Maybe God's telling you to do something. Maybe God's telling you to go somewhere. Maybe God's telling you to minister to someone like Ananias. You know, God is into using the no-namers. What do you mean? He's, in, he's into using the small things. Come back this evening, we'll talk about 1 Corinthians 1. God's into using the small things, the no-name things, the things that are insignificant to the world but are significant to God. Amen. I, I, I remember, I, I don't know if I shared this with you guys, maybe I have. My parents had a, it was a, 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 a redneck, a real redneck okay, in West Virginia. And he had a piece of wood, uh, what do you call it, like a tree stump. And it was painted on there, a little thing, a tree, some grass, and a little mouse. And uh, there's a, you know, some light coming down, and this little mouse, this tiny little thing, he's like, who, me, Lord? Yes, God wants to use you. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I don't even know if my parents still have it. I have to ask them this afternoon. But God's into using the no-namers. Behind many well-known men of God and servants of God, there are lesser-known believers who have had an influence in their life. Yeah. Ananias was that man. You, you, we, we focus so much, and I've never heard of a sermon on Ananias. Maybe you all have. But uh, we focus so much on Paul or Saul and turn this into Apostle Paul. And, oh, man, the things he's doing. And kind of just skim over Ananias. But Ananias was used in a very mighty way. Amen. And God had a plan for him because God has a plan for everyone. Yes, he does. Amen. Absolutely he does. It, it could it be possible that God is calling you to be an Ananias to someone. Yeah. Hmm. Ananias' first response was readiness. His second response was reservation. And notice number three in verse 17. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house. Ananias' third response was relinquishment. 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 Ananias did go his way. He did perform the will of God. Amen. It was a willful, voluntary surrender. Amen. Because God will not have a mandatory sacrifice, a, a mandatory whatever, God wants you to be willing of yourself. Right. Nobody puts a gun to your head and says, you got to get saved. God yeah, says, yeah. you can have it or you can leave it. Right. I love you all the same. It doesn't, yeah, matter yeah. What you, doesn't matter what you do. If you're saved, you're accepted in the beloved. Amen. Praise right. the Lord for that. And we can hurt our kids as parents when we say, and we put them on a performance-based level and say, the more things you do, the more, the more I'll love you. And you might not say it, but you can act that way. Instead of God, God is a loving Father. And He says, look, I don't care. I, I do care about you. I love you enough not to let you do those things. I don't want you to do those things. But even if you do those things, I'm still loving you. Amen. Still loving you. Praise Amen. God. I, I can't understand that. I'm still loving you. Amen. Still want to love you. I'm not. I, yeah, I, I could be angry. I could be wrathful. But I still am justified. And I, I'm still consistent. I'm still faithful. And I'm always loved. Always. He doesn't stop being one of his attributes and puts on another attribute. Right. He's always love. Amen. Amen. God is love. Amen. So Ananias went his way. He performed the will of God. Look at verse 17. He went his way, entered into the house. This is, And putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, reaffirming what's already heard, that appeared unto thee in the ways as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. hmm. Despite his fear, despite his reservations, despite his hesitation of that task, he still went. Amen. But he had to go the Lord's way. How? By faith. Amen. And because of his, the love of Christ and his love of the Lord. Why? Because a real disciple understands and demonstrates his love. Amen. The love of God which is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. Uh, and Jesus, by the way, demonstrated his love. But God commended 
commendeth his love toward us. That word means demonstrated, proved, or showed his love. How did God show his love to me? God commendeth his love. He showed his love by sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross. Amen. Wow. Proving his love. You love me? Prove it. Love is a choice. God chose to love you while we were ungodly. That's what the Bible says. God chose to love sinners. I don't know why he would love me. I was a wretched I was a wretched sinner when I got saved, but I understand one day that Jesus died for me, that I've offended a holy God because I'm born into this world a sinner. My parents didn't say, Joshua, this is how you're going to tell a lie. Joshua, this is how you're going to lust after women. Joshua, this is how you're going to steal things. No, I did that naturally because that's who I am. That's right. And that's who you are. You ain't no better. Amen. 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 But I understood that I was a sinner. I offended a holy, righteous God of the universe. And I said, Lord, save me a sinner. And he saved me by the grace of God. Amen. Nothing that I did but what he's done for me. We want a great, uh, exceeding faith, don't we? We say, man, give me the faith of Abraham. Give me the faith of Moses. Give me the faith of Jacob. Give me the faith of Paul. I want this great, exceeding faith. But we fail to comprehend that love exceeds faith. Amen. Mm. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Don't turn there. It says, and now abideth faith hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Uh, turn to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. I'm going to read a few verses here. 1 John chapter 4. Jump down to verse 7. If you hit Revelation, go back three books. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that knoweth love or everyone that loveth is born of God. So if you, you can't love if you're not born of God. Amen. Well, what do you mean? I love my kids. I love, if you're not born in again, you do not know the love of God. Amen. And knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. Why? For God is love. Amen. Jump across the page to verse 19. We love him. Why? Because he first loved us. He proved it. Ananias proved it too. He proved his love by being faithful to God. Verse 9 of chapter 4 of 1 John. And this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Amen. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us Amen. and sent his son to be the propitiation. That means the covering, the atonement what of his blood for our sins. Amen. Jesus had to shed his perfect sinless blood because he is God. He had holy blood because he is God. Amen. And he shed it for our sins. He was the one why he loved us and he redeemed us. Verse 11, Beloved, if God so love us, we ought also to love one another. Amen. Hmm. If we don't have a proper love for God, then we will not have a proper love for our fellow man. You, then whatever you do won't be pleasing to the Lord. Right? Whatsoever, whatsoever is, uh, is of not of faith is sin. We walk from faith to faith. God is pleased by our faith, but God's more concerned with your heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Amen. Jeremiah would tell us. Uh, we have to have a proper love for God, love for Jesus. Why? Uh, Deuteronomy 6.5. Four and five. I always say four and five. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God Amen. with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Amen. And you'll teach it unto your children, he goes on to say. And it'll be in your heart. So, if, But if we have a proper love for the Lord, it will manifest itself by faith and action. What, what do you mean? Faith is active obedience to the Word of God. Amen. Active obedience to God's Word. Trusting that God is in control. Did Ananias see that? Absolutely. Otherwise, he wouldn't have gone and said, Amen. Brother Saul. He had, why do you call him brother? Acknowledging that he was saved, but his love. Amen. I know you killed, you've killed my family. You persecuted my brethren. You persecuted the Lord. But Brother Saul. Wow. That's some love, transformation. And if we have a proper love for God, we'll act out properly to our fellow man. That's right. 
if, we, if, if you see someone who's always harsh with people and offended at people all the time, it's because their relation, I'm sorry, their fellowship as a Christian isn't right with the Lord. So if your fellowship isn't right with the Lord, and indeed our fellowship is with Jesus Christ and the Father, right? Then our fellowship is not going to be good with other men. Amen. But Ananias, trusting that God was in control because of his love, he acted out by faith. Ananias had to get that realization settled in his mind. He had to get that realization settled in his soul before he would act Amen. in obedience. But he was motivated by the love of Christ and his love for Christ. His first response was readiness. He says, Look, Behold, I am here, Lord. I'm here, Lord. I want to be used of you, Lord. Then he finds out what God actually wants him to do. Oh, maybe I'm not ready. Maybe there's a little reservation there. But then his third response and I love it because this is what we need to do. Relinquish self-control. Relinquish your will for his will. Amen. Ananias got that realization. He was motivated by his love that God would take care of him despite his fear, despite his reservations, despite his hesitations. But the main thing here is that Ananias didn't allow fear to stop him from being faithful. Amen. He didn't say, oh, man, I've heard all the bad things about Saul. I'm just going to hide out over here. I'll be fine over here. He didn't allow fear to do that to exactly. him. Fear wants to keep you right there. Yeah. But God hath not given you the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind, yeah. a ready mind to do the will of God. That's right. Not to sit and say, no, I can't, I can't, I can't. Uh, turn into a basket case. No, no, no. God wants you to get up and go. Get up and go. Amen. God's antidote for fear is faith. Was he hesitant? Was Ananias hesitant? Yes. Was he scared? Absolutely. Did he act by faith and obey? Yes. God so desires that we find his will, we follow his will, we fulfill his will. Amen. Will you, like Ananias, perform God's will for your life? I'm going to finish with an illustration. When J. Wilbur Chapman was in London, he had an opportunity to meet General Booth, who at the time was past 80 years of age. Dr. Chapman listened reverently as the old general spoke of the trials and the conflicts and the victories. Then the American evangelist asked the general if he would disclose his secret for success. He hesitated for a second, Dr. Chapman said, and I saw the tears come into his eyes and steal down his cheeks, and then he said, I'll tell you the secret. God has had all there was of me. There have been men with greater brains than I, men with greater opportunities, but from the day I got the poor of London on my heart and a vision of what Jesus Christ could do with the poor of London, I made up my mind that God would have all of William Booth there was. And if there is anything of power in the Salvation Army today, it is because God has all the adoration of my heart, all the power of my will, and all the influence of my life. Dr. Chapman said when he went away from that meeting with General Booth, knowing that the greatness of a man's power is in the measure of his surrender. Amen. Won't you be like Ananias? Will you yield to the Holy Spirit of God and His calling for your life, whatever it may be? You may say, Pastor, he isn't calling me. God calls every Christian for service. Amen. Every Christian. Have you yielded to the Lordship of Christ in your life? Whatever it is, be faithful to his will and perform to do it. God's always looking for men and women like Ananias. Seemingly insignificant, but God's willing to use because of their availability, not because of the ability. With God's calling comes God's enabling. And he's looking for people like Ananias, not, not so much for their ability, but for their availability and their faithfulness to fulfill his call on their lives. Are you an Ananias? Let's pray.